Hi, this is Julia Witt up with Talk Story TV, and we have with us this morning Daniel Toogood, who will be speaking about chronic pain and what we can do about it. So first of all, though, I'd like to ask you, Daniel, how you became interested in shamanism. Well, I'm interested in all forms of healing that work. Um, Western medicine has gone off in a different direction, which is dependent on pharmaceuticals and uh, removing organs that malfunction, etc. So any alternative, and it's a shame they're called alternative treatments, but anything that has to do with true healing is what I'm interested in, and, and, and that's what I do. The, the latest book I wrote is called Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days, and a lot of people find that strange because by definition from Western medicine, chronic means it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the body uh, is really well built, the human body, and it heals. And so uh, in, in, in your techniques and in my techniques, all we do is remove the interference with healing and let the, the, the well built body heal itself. Well, that sounds like a great idea. I've had chronic pain for 10 years now. Boy, I hope this will. <laughs> yeah, it, it will. It's basically what's going to happen here is, is, is if I did all the same treatments that everybody else did, including chiropractors, acupuncturists, medical doctors, etc., we'd get the same results, which leaves a whole bunch of chronic disorders out in the cold. Uh, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, migraines, chronic back pain, lupus, uh, ALS, multiple sclerosis. There's a ton of diseases that the medical professions have described and translated a diagnosis into Latin, but there's two things they don't know about all these chronic diseases. Number one, what caused them? And number two, how do you get rid of them? So in our conversation today, I'm going to answer those two questions. What causes chronic pain and how do you get rid of it? What kind of chronic pain do you have? They say it's bursitis. It's right at the the right at the bottom of my sits bones. It hurts if I sit too long. Mm -hmm. I can hardly drive anywhere. I can't go on airplanes because it's just too much sitting. How about walking? Does walking bother you? No. Good. Just sitting. Just sitting. And so, what have the doctors said? Nothing you can do. It's caused by inflammation. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. I'm glad you uh, said that. They're correct about that. Uh, I start with very simple concepts and, and uh, move to more detailed solutions. The simple concept is that all pain is caused by a process called inflammation. Inflammation is a series of biochemical events that happen in the body when you're injured, stressed, or infected. And so when you, when you like for example, hit your thumb with a hammer, it becomes inflamed. It swells, it gets red, it bleeds, mm -hmm. it throbs, it gets hot. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all of those uh, symptoms are caused by the inflammatory process because what your body has done is send specific cells and chemicals to that area to start the healing process. And it causes all these things, heat, redness, and swelling. When those chemicals start the repair process, they stimulate nerves in the area that send a signal to your brain that's interpreted as pain. So pain is a result of these chemicals stimulating nerves. And so in many cases, like hitting your thumb with a hammer, you know what caused it. You hit your thumb with the hammer. It's going to swell. It's going, and you know it's going to hurt for a reasonable period of time. And even without going to a doctor, it's going to heal, right? You've seen right. it before. It's just going to heal and, and go away. Uh, chronic pain is, is failure to heal. And the human body does, does not fail. If, if, if it's failing, something is interfering with the healing process. So the solution is to get rid of inflammation. The very best way to get rid of inflammation is to let it run its course. For example, when you hit your thumb with the hammer, there's no way of stopping the inflammation. You, you just let it run its course and it's going to heal the tissue. It'll hurt in the meantime. So you'll have pain for a period of time, but that's part of the healing process. Chronic pain is failure to heal. So if, if you have pain, whether it's chronic, it's been going on for a long time, doctors will tell you take anti-inflammatory medication, right? Because they know it's caused by inflammation. So if you take 
any number of them, Aleve, Advil, ibuprofen, Tylenol, aspirin, naproxen, there's a ton of them. These are anti-inflammatory substances that you swallow them and the chemical pill gets into your bloodstream and it goes everywhere in your body. It doesn't just go to your thumb that's injured, it goes everywhere. And wherever the inflammatory process is going on, that chemical interferes with some of the steps so it dumbs it down a little bit, makes it feel a little bit better until the pill wears off and then the inflammation comes back. Those pills are useful in uh, acute short-term injuries, a sprained ankle or something like that, to give you some relief while you heal. The, the anti-inflammatory drugs aren't going to heal you. They're just going to give you a little bit of relief. My discovery is there are certain substances you swallow just like you would a pill that make their way into the bloodstream that are the opposite of an anti-inflammatory, they are pro-inflammatory. And so as long as you consume, you are consuming these pro-inflammatory substances, it would be like if you and I are trying to put out a fire and I'm throwing buckets of water on it, that's anti-inflammatory. And you're throwing buckets of gasoline on it. That fire is not gonna go out. The solution is not for more anti-inflammatory pills to be thrown on the mix or more water thrown on the fire. The solution is to stop throwing the gasoline on the fire. The question is, what are the substances that causes inflammatory reactions? So I started investigating and asking these questions 35 years ago because I wondered why aren't people healing? Or another uh, example is why do people have pain that came on for no apparent reason? That happens to a lot of people. A lot of your listeners know that you, if you have lower back pain, sometimes it comes on, you didn't do anything. And mm -hmm. certainly headaches, you know, you didn't bonk your head. Why mm -hmm. does a headache come on? A headache is another chemical reaction of the brain, an inflammatory reaction of the brain to some pro-inflammatory substance that usually was ingested or swallowed. And so the solution uh, that, that the reason that doctors don't know what causes chronic pain is because they never ask the question, what do you eat? And then look into what those substances are. It's a very tedious process. Uh, a lot of doctors say they don't have time. However, uh, if they don't ask those questions, they're never going to get to the bottom of what causes your chronic pain. So that's what I started doing many years ago. And there are there's only a handful of very specific substances that cause most cases of chronic pain. So in, the, in a history and examination that I do with patients who suffer with chronic pain, I ask them all these questions. What do you do? What did you do? When did the pain come on? What seems to aggravate it? These are all questions that most doctors ask. Then, then they, they get to the questions of what do you eat? And that doesn't happen. And that's why so many diseases uh, are not solved because doctors don't ask patients what they're eating. And the solution is in those answers. And that's what I've been doing for many years. So basically, we go over what people are consuming. And like I said, it's a very tedious process. And we look for specific things. And when I find those specific things, we come up with a list, a list usually of one or two or three things that these are the things that are going to that you have to eliminate. And when you do that, you're no longer throwing gasoline on the fire. You're just letting your body heal and your body will heal. Wow, that'd be nice. <laughs> so, so we can start with you. I mean, I'll show you a little example of, of uh, uh, how long has your pain been bothering you? About 10 years. And did it come on because of some accident or fall or just kind of mysteriously gradually started? Um, it came on after a long road trip. My butt got sore and never got well. Are you on medication for anything? No, I was taking ibuprofen, but it damaged my heart, so I had to stop. Do you, uh, do you take any other medications for blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, thyroid? No, I don't take anything but cannabis now because... And that helps some? Yeah. Good. Yeah, so see, basically we're starting the questioning of what are you allowing into your body? I always start with medication. If you ever watch television at night, primetime television, most of the commercials are about drugs. And, I noticed that. And oh. all of, and that's where the money is in this country, I'll tell you. But all of the commercials are basically the same if you watch them, the formatting. They'll start off by telling you how wonderful this pill is and, and what the benefits are going to be for you. They do that for about 10 or 15 seconds. The rest of the commercial is, 
tell your doctor if you experience any of these weird, dangerous side effects, and then they'll mention them. And uh, a lot of them are certain kinds of chronic pain. So it seems like doctors would look at that and go, wow, you know what? If, if a pill could cause back pain or joint pain, then maybe other things can too, but they never look at that. So basically, we just eliminated the, the fact that you don't consume any medications except for uh, the CBD. Is that what it's called? Um, well, I found I discovered if you don't use the mixture, if you don't take advantage of the entourage effect, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so I take a mixture of CBD and THC. Do you drink coffee? No. Uh, do you eat breakfast in the morning? No. What's the first meal you eat of a day? Lunch. And typically, what do you have today? Did you have lunch today yet? Yes. What did you eat? I had a grilled cheese sandwich and soup. Was it canned soup or homemade soup? Homemade soup. You made it? Uh-huh. What kind was it? It was uh, beef noodle. I put um, some... Uh, did you put any bouillon or broth in it? No, but I did put some uh, cor uh, spicy spice in it. Okay. Give it a little hot, hotter taste. And did you drink anything with your lunch? No. And did you have any dessert? No. Typical dinner. Did you eat dinner last night? Yes. We had tacos. At home? Yeah. Ground beef? Yeah. Lettuce, tomato? Lettuce, no tomato. I'm allergic to tomato. Cheese? Cheese, yes. Corn tortilla? Uh, no, flour. And uh, any dessert? No. Uh, see, this is how this is how I, I practice every day, and we're going to come up with some answers for you. Uh, so let me ask you a few specific questions. You don't drink any coffee. Do you drink any sodas at all? No. Do you drink any milk at all? Not anymore. You used to? I used to, and then I got flu about two months ago, and when I got over the flu, I no longer drink milk. What happens? I get sick at my stomach. Do you use it on cereal at all? I get a... I get a uh, stomach ache and then I get uh, diarrhea when I take milk. So you stopped it all together? Yeah. You don't use it on cereal, right? No. Okay. And then uh, uh, do you like sweets? No, I don't drink. I quit all sugar because I thought that might help. Do you ever eat chocolate? Once in a while because I eat chocolate. Uh, edibles for the pain. How often do you have the chocolate edibles? The ones daily. that are chocolate? Daily. Every day? Yeah, about the si a piece of chocolate about the size of a caramel. And how long have you been doing that? Oh, for about six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. Do you get headaches at all? No, not usually. Any digestive problems? Yes. Uh, not as much because I started doing a lot of probiotics and that seemed to help the digestive problems. And as long as I keep my water intake way high, I don't have digestive problems. Do you ever eat salads? I eat salads pretty much every day. Uh, toss green salads with uh, lettuce. To, oh, you don't do tomato. Lettuce, uh, cucumber. Yeah. Onion. Any, any uh, dressing on your salads? Yeah, usually put ranch. And uh, do you put any cheese on your salad? No, I, I'm starting to cut the cheese out. Okay. TV dinners, do you ever eat those? No. Sausage? No. Hot dogs? No. Okay. So that this was a very brief one. I usually go much longer in, into it, but, but basically I'm looking for very specific things. There are five or six basic chemicals that cause most chronic pain and and... 90% of all cases of headaches, fibromyalgia, chronic pain is caused by one particular protein. It's a specific protein called casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. It's the main protein found in milk and dairy foods, which for you is the cheese that you have quite regularly. Uh, the ranch dressing that you use on your uh, salads is made from buttermilk. Uh-oh. How about ice cream? Do you ever eat ice cream? 
once in a great while, but not so much because it's got so much sugar in it. I'm trying to cut out sugar. Are you diabetic? No, but my grandmother died of diabetes. It's all in my family. Yogurt? Do you ever eat yogurt? No, I quit eating that too. You ever get panic attacks? Yes. How often? Um, maybe once a month. Have you seen doctors about that? No. They wouldn't know anyways. Okay, so so this was uh, quicker than I usually do, but let me tell you what we came up with here. First of all, you um, uh, you have the mentality that most Americans do, most people do, and that is that if you have any kind of symptom, like digestive upset, you're looking for something you can take. Should you take probiotics? Should you take cannabis? Uh, what should you take? Um, my approach is the opposite, and that is that I have faith that the human body is really well built and it will heal. So the solution is not to add anything to aid in that process, it's to eliminate, to eliminate specific things. So on, on your uh, list, there are two main substances that um, you need to eliminate 100%. Uh, we talked about the casein, that's in the cheese, the ranch dressing, uh, the ice cream you have occasionally, et cetera, the, the dairy foods. Okay. Uh, every time you have some cheese, how often do you have cheese? Two or three times a week, would you say? Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, so every time you have a piece of cheese, which, is a, which contains the pro-inflammatory substance casein, that's going to elevate the level of inflammation in your body for three or four or five days from the one. Oh my God. So you doing it two or three times a week, along with the ranch dressing, you're getting regular exposure to the most common cause of the chronic inflammation that you have. And that's casein. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is the most powerful pro-inflammatory substance on the planet. And it is chocolate. Chocolate oh. is like if, if, Case, if you consume dairy foods, that's like throwing gasoline on a fire. When you consume chocolate, that's like throwing napalm on a fire. It's extremely mm. pro-inflammatory. So you can do the, the cannabis. You just stay away from the chocolate edibles. You just do the edibles that don't have the chocolate. Okay. And the, the last book I wrote is called Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days. Healing, you've seen healing before. You've cut yourself. You've bruised yourself. You've done all these things. Healing uh, takes anywhere between seven and 90 days to, uh, to, for the tissue to heal. Uh, so the hardest part of what I do is, first of all, I would give you a specific list of all of the substances that are dairy, which is casein. That's milk, cheese, yogurt, ice cream, cottage cheese, ranch dressing, blue cheese, all the dairy foods, and some non-dairy items like coffee creamers, etc., contain sodium caseinate, which is a, um, which is a form of the, the milk protein that causes the inflammation. And you would eliminate all chocolate. Uh, wow. Many, many times people in the first seven days will experience withdrawal. Uh, just like, for example, were you ever a coffee drinker? Oh, yeah. I had a hard time quitting coffee. Got a headache, huh? Yeah, I got a headache and I craved it. <laughs> yes, that's the craving and the headache. Those are common uh, withdrawal symptoms. So you feel lousy for about seven days, three to four days, really bad, sometimes up to seven, in rare cases, 14 days. Uh, the key is, though, you want to be 100% off of those two substances. Then uh, between seven and 30 days, you're going to see a definite change in your symptoms. Uh, you may get to 30 days and not be 100% pain-free, but you will be 100% pain-free by 90 days. 90 days is the outside of healing. There's a third substance that uh, you're getting some of that will cause panic attacks, mood changes, and inflammation. And it's a chemical you've heard of before called MSG, monosodium glutamate. Mm -hmm. Both ranch dressing has some of that in it. Any processed meat like sausage, hot dogs, tuna fish, chorizo, Tuna fish. Uh, salami, bologna. Now, you can buy tuna fish. There's lots of tuna fish out there that uh, doesn't have MSG in it. Uh, the MSG is listed on the label. If you look at the label for ingredients, uh -huh. uh, they will say tuna. Um, and the, when they use MSG, they put it in. Um, it's called vegetable broth. They'll put vegetable broth in the, uh, in the, the can. And if you okay. see a, a can that does not have the vegetable broth, or there are several other names that, that MSG goes by, like hydrolyzed protein, natural flavors, yeast extract, autolyzed yeast. Um, 
those are all included in my book to say, you know, these are the substances that contain MSG. MSG is the number one cause of panic attacks. So uh, do you, chips, do you ever eat chips? Yes. Plain or flavored? All, all of them. All of them. Flavored chips. chips. Flavored chips like barbecued sour cream and onion, uh, mm -hmm. red hot Cheetos. All of those contain high doses of the substance, which is MSG. Uh, oh I wrote a... I, I wrote a book years ago called MSG is everywhere. That's on the internet too. Um, because MSG is everywhere. It should be illegal, but it can cause panic attacks, mood changes, heart palpitations, headaches, aches and pains, mysterious bruises. Oh my feeling, God. A feeling of fullness in the throat. Oh, these are all symptoms. Uh, the, the book that I wrote and the way that I practice, everything I'm telling you is based on observations. It's not theory, it's observations. So, I know that when I first started doing this, I found out that, wow, dairy foods are the big culprit. I didn't know what it was in dairy foods, but I finally figured out that it was casein because people would react to some non-dairy foods like Ensure. Ensure is a protein uh, drink that uh, contains sodium caseinate, which is a form of the milk protein, and patients will react to that too. So I started off, dairy foods was the big bugaboo. I figured out it was casein, and I discovered that chocolate uh, here's my observation about chocolate. Um, many, many, most people who suffer with any form of chronic pain like yours are reacting to the milk protein and the solution is to get rid of it. All of those patients who react to casein, they also will react to chocolate, only their reaction is worse. So it's the elimination of dairy foods and chocolate, which is the beginning of your case. MSG is uh, a substance that um, you should research and, and make sure you don't do that. But basically what I see you doing is the flavored chips. If you have plain potato chips like Lay's or Ruffles or Fritos, if they're plain, they do not contain the flavor enhancer, which is MSG. Okay. If they are flavored like uh, barbecued, sour cream and onion, red hot Cheetos. Yes, I do all of those. <laughs> all of those flavored ones are crap. Okay. And they contain that chemical, which is uh, MSG. So that's, those are the three main substances. Now, when we look at someone like you, most patients, if you just do those two or three things, they'll get relief. Uh, there's a possibility, since you have some digestive issues, that you might drop down to the fourth substance, which is very popular now. A lot of people are trying to avoid it, and it's difficult to avoid. It's called gluten. You may have heard of gluten before. Oh, yeah, gluten. Gluten is, is the main protein in bread pasta, cakes, cookies, crackers. And although it's very popular now, I don't see it as often in my practice as I do the other ones we talked about, which is dairy, chocolate, and MSG. So the way I would start with you is, first of all, we'd investigate how often you have bread. Do you have bread every day? Yeah, well, I try to avoid it because it makes me get fat. Right. So, so I would say, well, maybe cut back on that. But I would say be 100% on the dairy and the chocolate okay. and the, those three things. So that's, that's, this is kind of a simple little workup of, of how we work up patients. Now, the hard part, the hard part of the way I practice is number one, to convince you to do it. And then number two, that do you have the, uh, the concentration and the diligence to do it? Because a lot of people will come back and say, oh, well, you know, I'm still having some cream in my coffee. I'm still having this. I'm still, still having that. And like I said before, if you put a little bit of cream in your coffee, your pain is going to be inflamed for three or four or five days. No, I think I have the diligence to do it because Good. I'm, my husband's getting ready to retire and we wanted to travel and I can't even imagine going anywhere on an airplane. Mm -hmm. I hurt too bad to sit there. Yeah. So that's how you start. And most likely you'll get you'll get probably 100% results within 90 days, depending on how diligent you can be. When I manage a case like yours, we usually do chiropractic care and physical therapy too. And what we do is we say, okay, let's do dairy, chocolate, no MSG. I expect to see some change by 30 days. There should be an improvement, a pretty big improvement. If there's not, then what I would say in a case like yours, I would say, well, then we should add gluten to your list of things to avoid. Okay. So, uh, but like I said, if you want to be aggressive, you can do the gluten right off the top. That way you'll lose weight and you'll be really set for your vacation too. <laughs> but the dairy and the chocolate and the MSG, those, those are the main ones. And, and, uh, I wasn't taught any of this in school. How are we doing for time? Um, oh, we're close. Yeah. We're close okay. to time, but I think, tell us again where we can get your book and the name of it again. 
Yeah, my book is called Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days. My name is Daniel Tugood, T-W-O-G-O-O-D. I'm a chiropractor in Apple Valley, California. If you Google any one of those, me, or you can get the book on Amazon. If you have an Android phone, you can go to the uh, Google App Store and you can type in the title, Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days, and you can buy the book and it'll get on your, com- your phone or computer for 99 cents. Great. Uh, if you have an iPhone, I think it's three ninety nine or something like that. You can go to the iBooks store, do the same thing, Chronic Pain Gone 90 Days. You can get the book on Amazon. Uh, and if you Google me, my name, then you can see my webpage. And, and I do a little video there and explain how this all works. But what I hope to share in what we talked about today is this is just simple common sense. It really, it's not any voodoo medicine. It's not anything that people would think is very weird, although some people do. But if you can, if you can explain it, that it's just pro-inflammatory substances feeding the pain. If you stop taking them, then your body will heal. So that's what it's all about. And I'm Daniel Tugood. And I hope that you have some listeners who, and including yourself, who can uh, take this information, follow the instructions, and get some relief. And if you do, write me a note and tell me what your experience was, and I'll put it in my next book. Great. I will. I'll do it because I'm really anxious to. Yeah, and you're a, you're a classic case. You have regular exposure to these substances. So I think you'll have a really good outcome. What about, uh, I was just wondering, do spices do any of those cause problems? Yes. Uh, when we talk about the MSG, there are many spices. Like I asked you about bouillon and broth. You know those little yeah. bouillon cubes? Uh-huh. Those- those are basically salt and MSG. Uh, the, the, the bouillon crystals or the liquid bouillon or broth, those are all very high doses of MSG. Okay. The MSG is a little different than the dairy. The MSG is a toxin, so it's dose dependent, like alcohol. If, oh, you, have, okay. if, you, have a, if you have a sip of alcohol, you won't notice much. But if you have two or three drinks, you'll notice it. And if you drink enough of it, you'll pass out or die. MSG is the same way. A little dose you might not notice, but if you have a high dose, which is in like uh, Chinese food, restaurant soup, top yeah. ramen, cup of soup, cup of noodle, or flavored chips, you will have more uh, a more exuberant reaction. So right. those are the three main ones, dairy, chocolate, and MSG. Okay. Thank you very much for being with us today, You're Dan. You're welcome. You have I a good day. Know how it goes. All right. Bye-bye. All right.